Wow, my friends, I am so happy to be part of this group. I was thinking, Hashem, earlier today that it's like a miracle that, um, that he's brought this group together and that I found it and that he's got me in here with all of you guys. Um, it's like uh, supernatural, I think is what I would say, uh, that this group exists and that we are uh, all connected and uh, it seems that in the past couple days, God is really working on me in the area of speech and anger. I had gotten uh, upset with one of the crew members at work, and uh, I said some stuff. <laughs> and uh, the crew member told one of the other crew members, he said, Wow, I've, I've seen the boss upset before, but I've never seen him say that. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, you kind of you start to take those types of things to heart uh, when you hear them through the grapevine. And so I began to think about maybe I should return to my study of uh, proper speech. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, let's see, this is a Hofa Times family lesson a day. Really neat book from um, Art Scroll if you happen to... Um, have a family involved. This is a great one to study together. Uh, you can also pick up just the regular Hofa time lesson a day, and this is really a neat uh, read as well. And I decided that uh, this morning I was chatting with some of the other guys and decided it would be a great idea to start a series on proper speech. So I opened up my family lesson a day and I turned to uh, today's portion. Uh, today's uh, lesson, I guess, would be the better way to say it. And uh, very interesting because as I was thinking, uh, back up just a second, as I was thinking this morning about would it be appropriate to have some sort of a video series on proper speech, I opened up um, teaching from Rebbe Nachman this morning. And he says, from today's lesson, <laughs> ah, no coincidences, he says, holy tongue can be speaking to the creator in your own vernacular, but speaking the truth. So the having a holy tongue is part of you know what's going to happen. God is going to give the entire world a holy tongue. And Reb Nachman says that holy tongue can, can be speaking, he says in lesson 19, perfection of the holy tongue means speaking many holy words of Torah and prayer and conversation with one's creator. And he also says that that can be even in your own language. So it doesn't have to be that you are sitting and you're speaking words of Torah and prayer in Hebrew. It can be in whatever your native language happens to be as long as you're speaking uh, in truth. So a lot of times whenever we have anger, uh, we tend to lash out in uh, something that's not true. Um, and it's very important that we remain, uh, that we remain very, very true. I, I heard a, an interesting, I guess, little story about uh, evil speech. And that's what the Chufa time really gets into and helps you understand what, what inappropriate speech is, Lashon Hara, uh, evil speech. And the, uh, basically what he had said is like, let, let's see, there, there's uh, three people in a group and one person happens to say to another, hey, do you ever notice that Bob, let's say we have Bob, Joe, and Dave. And um, Joe says to Dave, hey, do you ever notice that Bob is, uh, you know, he's kind of annoying. <laughs> and Dave had never, ever thought about that. It, it would, the thought had never crossed his mind. Well, the next time that Dave sees Bob, that thought is in his head that Joe said, oh, he's annoying. And he begins to see things that annoy him in Bob, right? It's like, oh, you know what? I think Joe's right. Bob is kind of annoying. And that type of thing can just grow and spread into a group. And you can have uh, horrendous outcomes just from that little bitty thing. Um, suddenly, you know, uh, Bob starts to feel that other people don't like him for some reason and he just doesn't know why. Like everything was fine with, 
with Dave yesterday, and now today Dave seems sort of aloof. And eventually Bob doesn't feel comfortable in that group anymore, and he may leave. And uh, so you can really have a lot of horrible outcomes from just a tiny little word, and they can affect people's uh, lives, they can affect their businesses, they can affect their, um, their families. So we have to be very careful. And that's one of the reasons why it's so good to study what is evil speech because we, well, oftentimes we say things we don't even think before we say them. We don't know that what we're saying is inappropriate because we haven't really thought it out. And the Hofa time has, has really brought down where he can, where he's thought through the different scenarios that we're in and helps us to recognize what that speech looks like and helps us to realize how we can get out of it. So we'll go back to today. Uh, we opened up, and this is, I think it's section six, five, and six. Um, and this is, a, if you wanted to read it and you had the book, this is day 53 from the family lesson a day. And um, he's talking about how you might be in a group of people in a discussion, and all of a sudden evil speech comes up. Like they began speaking bad about somebody or something and you don't want to be there because you realize what's happening and you, you want to get out of the situation and you may or may not be able to. So he's going to talk about what you could potentially do. And he says, if a person is able to leave that gathering, like if you're able to get out of there or if you can put your fingers in your ears at that time, then it's a great mitzvah to do so. That's what you should do because you want to try your best to not hear evil speech at all costs. However, he says, if it's impossible for you to get out of that gathering, right? And you feel like, oh, it's too difficult for me to put my fingers in my ears because of the way that people are going to perceive what I'm doing with my fingers in, in my ears. Um, and you think that people are going to laugh at you or whatever then what you have to do is you actually have to wage a war in your mind with the Yetzirah. So he says that you want to make sure that you're not transgressing the prohibition of hearing Lashon Hara. So he says that you have to decide in your mind, absolutely you will not believe whatever the words are that are coming out. So again, you, you want to leave, you want to put your fingers in your ears, you want to not hear it. But if you cannot do either of those things, then you have to wage that war in your head and you have to say, I absolutely will not believe whatever the words are that's coming because I realize that this is evil speech, right? And the other thing is you don't want to take any pleasure in hearing those accounts, right? You, you want to make sure that it's not pleasing to you, that you're not uh, enjoying the conversation. And then the third thing is you want to be steadfast in not showing the speaker. So people around you are speaking that and you want to be steadfast in not showing any sort of expression or movement, anything in your face that would indicate that you agree with what they're saying. And if possible, you want to remain stony faced. Um, you want to show maybe even a little bit of anger on your face so that they realize that you're not endorsing what they're saying. So you can't leave the group. You can't place your fingers in your ears. So you want to make sure that you're also not letting them think that you agree with them in any fashion. And that could be just a stern face is basically what he's saying. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's something I've been faced with before and didn't know what to do. And I'm very thankful to, to hear the words because now I can say, all right, I'm going to... Um, try to put that into practice. And I bet that I'm going to be tested on that today. <laughs> Oftentimes I'm studying it and I'm trying to share with others and then I'm tested. So I'm going to do my best. Now I, I have a, a way to go about it and uh, I bet that I'm going to be tested. So hopefully I'll just be able to leave because that seems like the easy one. Um, Hope of Time concludes today's lesson and he's, he's um, basically quoting from Rev Eliezer bin Hire Kanos, and he's speaking to his son. And the quote is, My son, do not sit among groups who speak evil of others. For when these words ascend above, they are recorded in a book. Those who are present are inscribed in the book as a wicked group. Uh, Bale Lashanhara. And we don't want to be part of that inscription of being involved in a wicked group. So 
may we all um, do our best. May, may we merit to hear the wisdom of proper speech. May we enjoy at least an hour today of speaking the truth to Hashem in our own language. And um, may, we, uh, may we all just have a blessed and peaceful day and only good words uh, coming into our ears and coming out of our mouths.